Why did Visa choose Ethereum to settle transactions? Ethereum is slow, gas fees are expensive. Why didn't Visa choose Cardano? Why didn't Visa choose Algorand? Why didn't Visa choose Stellar XLM? And it seems that there is a lot of confusion when it comes to this news story. I looked across Twitter and all of social media, and there has been very poor coverage of this story. Many think it has to do with going to the store and buying a coffee or buying a slice of pizza and constantly paying high transaction fees, but it has nothing to do with that. When it comes to the story of Visa, choosing USDC to settle transactions built on top of Ethereum, it has very little to do with gas fees. And in this video, I'm going to tell you exactly why Visa chose Ethereum. And by the end of this video, it is going to make complete sense to you. Welcome aboard the Bitcoin Express. My name is Chase. Let's get to it. In front of me, I have a tweet from Terry Angelos, who is the global head of fintech at Visa. And in this tweet, he stated there are two parts to a transaction. The first part, authorization, is where you tap your card at a coffee shop, regardless of currency, country, or time zone, and your payment is instantly accepted. You walk out with a latte. So this is what we know at the consumer level. We go into a store, we buy something, the transaction is complete in five seconds, we walk out with our product and we're happy. But this is only the first part of a transaction. The second part is much more complicated. What goes on behind the scenes? The second part is settlement. This is how funds move from your bank, actually the bank that funded the coffee, to the merchant who served the coffee. And this process, this current process we have with the traditional legacy banking system is very expensive and very complicated. So Visa will settle transactions in USDC coin via the Ethereum blockchain. And they will be testing this program with crypto.com. And the way it works right now for crypto.com and other companies as well, is that when they go ahead and they settle behind the scenes, it is very complicated. They deposit money into a special bank account and then it's wired to Visa at the end of the day to settle transactions or maybe at the end of the week. And this process increases cost for businesses and makes things more complicated. So we only know what's at the consumer level. We go to the store, we make a payment, it's over. But behind the scenes, it is much more complicated. It is complex. It can take days, sometimes even weeks. You don't know what's going on. You don't know where your transaction is. Will it go through? Will it be returned? And you're still paying fees along the way. So how does Ethereum fix this, right? We've been speaking about for years, Ethereum will replace the traditional banking system. How does this help? It's pretty simple. Instead of going through this whole entire long complicated process, the way you settle, is you take USDC coin, which is built on Ethereum, and you simply send it, and it's settled in maybe a few minutes. That's it, it's that simple. And because of this, you will have to pay a gas fee, right? We already were paying fees with the traditional banking system, but in the case of Ethereum, we will be paying gas fees. So like I said earlier in the intro, many think this has to do with going to the store, buying a coffee, buying a pizza, paying these transaction fees over and over, but the way it's going to work is it's going to be done through batch transactions. So at the end of the day or the end of the week, someone like crypto.com will let's say have $50 million, $100 million they need to settle. They're going to send it and pay a gas fee of $20, $30. Extremely insignificant. They do not mind paying these gas fees. And I do wanna mention that when you perform a more complex transaction on Ethereum, such as a smart contract, something on Uniswap, maybe you'll pay 50 to $100. But just to simply send something like Ethereum might be 10, 20, $30. Of course, this can go up and down depending on the network, but this is insignificant. This does not matter to a company such as crypto.com. This process is going to be so much more simple and easier that I would say these companies would be willing to pay up to $500, $1,000 to do the same exact transactions, but that won't be the case. 20, 30, maybe $50, but it's only going to get cheaper over time with Ethereum layer two solutions, and eventually we will have Ethereum 2.0. So we get this part. It is much more simple, it is easy, it is not complex at all, right? But still, why did they choose USDC coin built on top of Ethereum? 
And this comes down to regulatory clarity. There are many stable coins out there. Look at this whole list of stable coins. Why did Visa choose USDC coin? They chose USDC coin is because it is the most regulated stable coin. It is backed by Circle and Coinbase. And we know for a fact that it is backed one to one, unlike something like Tether, which is likely not backed one to one. So they're choosing they're choosing USDC coin. But the thing about USDC coin is that while USDC originally started as a token on top of the Ethereum blockchain, USDC also supports two other blockchains, Algorand and Stellar. So why didn't Visa choose Algorand or Stellar? And it comes right back to regulatory clarity. To date, Bitcoin and Ethereum are the only two projects that have been labeled as non-securities by the SEC. And with this news of Visa getting involved with crypto, they become the largest, most established company to integrate crypto into their ecosystem. And when we're talking about a company such as Visa, they need regulatory clarity. They are not going to use a project such as Algorand or Stellar, which has not been given that green light by the SEC and has not been battle tested. Of course, this can change in the future, in two years, three years, maybe they will use something like Algorand or maybe they will use something like Stellar. But more specifically, specifically, when we look at something like Stellar, right now it is very unclear what their future is going to look like because right now Ripple is under a lawsuit by the SEC. The SEC has claimed that Ripple was selling XRP in the form of an unregistered security. And Stellar is very similar to XRP in terms of how it was created. And even the founder of Stellar, Jen McCaleb, is also the founder of XRP. So at the moment, Visa would likely not choose to send USDC over something like Stellar. Of course, this can change in the future. And a good way for you to stay up to date on what is really allowed by the regulator, what has the green light, is also look at what PayPal is selling, right? So right after Visa, PayPal is probably also one of the biggest companies to integrate crypto into their ecosystem. And they only sell Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, and Bitcoin Cash. Bitcoin and Ethereum, of course, we know, non-securities by the SEC. And Litecoin and Bitcoin Cash are allowed because of the way they were created. It is very similar to Bitcoin. So if Bitcoin has the green light, it is very likely that Litecoin and Bitcoin Cash have the green light as well, 99%. So we see Algorand, we see Seller. Maybe the tech is good, the fees are cheaper, but it simply does not have the regulatory green light. Well, what about Cardano? Why didn't Visa choose Cardano? The reason is because at the moment, they physically can't. Right now, as I make this video in the end of March 2021, Cardano does not have fully functioning smart contracts yet. So even if Visa wanted to use Cardano, they wouldn't be able to do that now. They would have to wait for the future. And I want to clarify here, guys. Right now, they chose Ethereum because right now it makes the most sense. Ethereum has been battle tested. It has the regulatory green light. But if you're watching this, this video in a year from now or two years from now, things may change. These other projects will get the regulatory green light they will have been battle tested and then maybe Visa will choose a stable coin built on top of one of those blockchains. But by the time that arrives, it is likely we will also have layer two scaling solutions on Ethereum and also Ethereum 2.0. So really Ethereum is in front of everyone else right now when it comes to being the global settlement layer. And also I do wanna mention some big news from today. PayPal will let US users pay with Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin starting today. So this is also extremely bullish news for crypto in general. And coming back to this Ethereum, a lot of people will watch this video and say, what are you talking about, man? You're an Ethereum maximalist. I'm not an Ethereum maximalist. I own a lot of different cryptocurrencies. I'm simply looking at what is going on, right? Ethereum has the regulatory green light. It has been battle tested and a company like Visa will use Ethereum because of those very reasons. And like we said in the video, the gas fees have nothing to do with this. These are batch transactions, sending 50 million, 100 million, paying a gas fee of 20 or $30. These companies were paying fees already with a traditional banking system. 
they're not going to, at least at this moment, switch over to another blockchain so that they can pay a dollar in gas fees or gas fees or transaction fees or whatever you wanna call it on a different blockchain without knowing that it is 100% accepted by the regulators. So this is what it is for right now. Of course, as I mentioned, this can change in the future. And when this news came out, extremely, extremely bullish news, it didn't really move the market. Ethereum went up a small percentage, but right in front of our eyes, what we have been speaking about for years, Ethereum and crypto is slowly replacing the traditional legacy banking system. This is very, very big news. And when I look at Ethereum, it is extremely undervalued, extremely, severely. It is super undervalued. This is not to say Ethereum is the only blockchain. We will see in the future, potentially Cardano, Algorand, who knows, maybe Stellar will emerge and make a name for itself. But at the very moment right now, it is Ethereum. Let me know what you guys think down below. I wanna hear your thoughts, right? I presented you with this information. It's not really an opinion piece. This is what Visa is looking at, right? They are not going to jump into something that has not been battle tested. So I wanna know what you guys think. Put your comments down below. Like this video, subscribe to the channel. Thank you for listening and I'll see you next time.